Hello, Internet! Welcome to Games That Time Forgot. It's October here. This time around, we're looking at Wolfenstein, put out in 2009 by id and Raven Software. Uh, I have a script here. That script is gone. Screw it. Okay, so what's happening in Germany for this game? Well, you're playing as BJ Blaskowitz, an agent for the OSA, an American agency dealing with paranormal... Activity. I was trying to avoid that so that way it didn't sound like a movie because we're going to be talking about a lot of movies here. Anyway, BJ's going through Eisenstadt, Germany, which doesn't actually exist, in order to stop the Nazis from opening up the legally distinct from Event Horizon portal to the dimension of Black Sun, the blue and orange slice of hell full of bloated baby men and monsters that are kind of actually cool, but not enough to sustain the game. Uh, along the way, he gets a medallion that helps him see through walls and basically give the player a headache, but also slow down time, have his bullets go through Black Sun Energy Shields, and give himself a shield, sure, why not, whatever. The battery life on this medallion is laughably small, and if you're running any of the extra apps in the background, it's going to deplete it even faster. It's kind of like an early generation iPhone that is going to help you kill Nazis by giving you headache vision and occasional extra superpowers. Okay, look, here's the thing about this game. Uh, I have a history with Wolfenstein. It's a series that has brought me many, many smiles, and the fact that this is Wolfenstein 2009... The sequel to the reboot, which wasn't actually a reboot, but just a sequel, returned to Castle Wolfenstein. And then they did New Order, which kind of undoes everything, but we're not reviewing that game right now. Everybody else is reviewing that. We don't do things as they come out. That's all a long way of saying that I really don't want to talk about this game. It was a mediocre pile of crap. A fun bit of trivia for you. Two of the founders of id Software, John Carmack and John Romero, had differing views on games, particularly first-person shooters. Romero said that gamers weren't looking for plot in their games. He likened it to the plot in a pornographic film, saying it's not why you're there. Carmack took the other view, saying that the plot was important. This is a Romero game. The single-player campaign is laughably short. I had no idea what the hell was going on from one moment to the next in these characters' lives. And I'm not asking for, you know, and then he had a good BM, or then he had ramen for dinner. No. When they revealed one of the possible traitors, my reaction was a resounding, Who? Did... Did I... Did I meet him? You sure it's not this guy? This guy looks impossibly, like... He's about to start screaming if the Von Trapps had escaped. And then there's BJ Blaskowitz, failed Kurt Russell clone, where they got the looks, but they didn't quite get the charisma, or the acting ability, or anything to make him likable whatsoever at all. Okay, let's focus on the game itself and its mechanics before we move on to the things that really just made me throw up my hands and really not want to even finish this game. The gun selection. Hooray, you have three BFGs, four if you count the rocket launcher. You have two machine guns, and you've got yourself a sniper rifle. Hooray. You don't have any sidearms, and you don't have a shotgun, which would have been extremely helpful in a lot of these situations. Not to mention the fact that this is a first-person shooter put out by id Software. How does it not have a shotgun? That was like their signature weapon for the longest time. Mention Doom. What does it have? You're blasting demons in the face with shotguns. Now look, this, it's just one of those things that you kind of come to expect. And while it's great to think outside the box and have different types of weapons for different types of situations, it's still necessary to have house-to-house -house combat with a shotgun. It's just helpful. Besides, even if it's irrational that they would have a shotgun in a country that didn't manufacture them. You're also talking about a video game that has you slowing down time, shooting through power shields, drawing up a power shield yourself, walking through walls, and then going to an alternate dimension. I think I can have my shotgun, please. The gun mechanics themselves are passable, acceptable, competent. Uh, it's very point and click, although why they gave you a scope for the sprayiest, prayiest of the machine guns is a little bit beyond me. And how the other automatic weapon has a silencer? Admittedly, of all the leaps of logic in this game, of all the, you know, stretching my suspension of disbelief, that's the one that made me go, okay, look, this is bull. This is malarkey. This is crap. <sighs> The storytelling is fairly simple. You have to go to X to get Y, stop Z. Now, all this sounds familiar from previous reviews, but here's the thing. At least in there, they either, one, 
made no bones about it being a bare bones plot, or two, they went into depth as to why your character had an actual motivation, the people sending you there had an actual motivation, and there was witty banter between them so that way they could actually have this thing happen. Make you understand why it's important. Anything else to drive the action forward and bring it home. In this one, since you don't know crap all about anybody, there's no real just, okay, they're Nazis. Hey, I'm all for fighting Nazis. I think that's great. But since you know there's going to be a betrayal because somebody's going to stab you in the back, possibly more than one person will stab you in the back. For all you know, you're going to be left on your own trying to fight your way out of Europe because of these people. It's not staggering. There's no sense of, ah, le gasp, I have been stabbed in the back. No, it just comes down to, who? Um, okay, I guess, I guess, I guess they're bastards. Um, can I go kill things now? And even the killing things, the BFGs are always fun in these games. I barely used them because they were so redundant. There was nothing really new. You have your, I'm gonna electrocute you. You have your other, I'm going to electrocute you. And then you have your atomizer, which admittedly was a lot of fun. But still, you use it so rarely, it comes in at the very end of the game, the ammo is scarce, and it's just blah. Adding to this is the problem that BJ Blaskowitz doesn't have a lot going for him in terms of character. I mentioned before, he looks like Kurt Russell. Just lacks the charm and everything that makes Kurt Russell a good actor, like the ability to act. Way back in the 90s, Kurt Russell was in a movie called Soldier. The only things that really stuck with people was, one, it tied into cult classic Blade Runner, and two, Kurt Russell acted his ass off and made it bearable. That's what a good leading man can do. That's what a good character can do. And when you combine the two, even a piece of crap film can be watchable, can be enjoyable beyond schadenfreude. Seeing B.J. Blaskowitz, who does look like Kurt Russell, filled me with a little bit of hope. Like, okay, this is going to be the summer blockbuster game. This is going to be fun, there's going to be just enough depth in it to drown, and possibly it'll be a rewarding experience on some level, if only base and visceral. It wasn't any of these things. At all. Even with the nice nods they do to other movies and other things. It's all played murderously straight by people who actually don't want to be there. How terrible is it for a video game to make you convinced the bots, the AI, the supporting cast, however you want to view them, do not want to be a part of it. It's a paycheck for them. And they're not even real! They don't even get paid! As ludicrous as it sounds, this is the equivalent of every summer blockbuster that is immediately forgotten. Wolfenstein 2009 recently got a sequel with Wolfenstein's The New Order. How they managed this is beyond me, especially since they couldn't even keep the villain's name straight. It went from Strasse in Return to Castle Wolfenstein to Strauss in Wolfenstein 2009 back to Strasse in Wolfenstein's The New Order. It's the same character in each. They make allusions to the previous games in each. They couldn't even get the guy's name right in this one. Three out of ten, don't even bother it. I didn't try the multiplayer because nobody's playing it anymore, so forget about that part. Not enjoyable at all beyond competent gun mechanics. I don't have a catchphrase. Later, people of Earth.